slightly unusual jaywalk today it's neither a forest or a river and I'm out of breath because I just ran up a flight of stairs we're at the North Yorkshire Moors Railway hopefully to see the uh, loco shed and I think we're just missing the train it's just arrived here or oh, it's pulling out having just driven here up and down some of the steepest hills I've ever driven up in a motorhome I'm filled with wonder that people actually built railways through this terrain this is apparently the longest heritage railway in the country at 18 miles and it runs through the hilliest terrain imaginable has come onto this line I don't know if it will be continuing through or whether it will now reverse the line goes from Pickering to Whitby and I don't know why I love these things so much but the smell of them immediately returns me to my childhood. And I think one of the reasons that I love them so much. Sorry? I'll do my best to so you look very smart. Do you mind if I, I mean, film you? It'll be on YouTube anyway when you go over there. No, it's probably for my own private enjoyment. Okay, the engine sheds here, I believe. To the inside there, to the left. The one that says footpath to engine That's shed. The one. Do I need a ticket? Just, no, no. That's kind of. Thank you, sir. It's kind of you. And there's a shop up there as well if you want something to drink. Exit through the gift shop. Good man. Thank you. Right. So we'll see. So can I cross to that platform? Yes, you can. We'll yes, here. Thank you. Like all of these uh, like all of these heritage railways they are staffed by volunteers who take a great deal of delight in being able to wear the uniforms and practice the industrial routines of yesteryear and they still do old-fashioned things like every train has a token it's a way of making sure there's only ever one train on the line at any given time and you hand in the token when you get to the station so here we go one of the things I love about this stuff is that it's so visible. Technology nowadays is usually sheathed in some kind of coating and you can't see the workings. But with these things you can see, smell and hear the workings. Hello! Are they making you shovel the coal? Oh, 
perfect. But they're always oozing steam and water. I presume there's an amount of pressure management going on where you allow the steam to escape. What time are you off, Jack? This goes in the first one. Okay. All right, we're not going to see that. So, let's go. Oh, look, a glimpse of luxury. A dining car. So, we're going to walk up to the engine shed. Look at this magnificent beast close up. This very kind gentleman, I won't film you for privacy reasons, sir, has oh, allowed yeah. me to come on the. In that case, I will film you. He's yeah, allowed me to come right. on the foot plate. Is that the young lady just sitting there? Just yes, that's good. Good. So you're just sitting here, sort of keeping up enough steam for your journey, but not letting no, it. No, no, this engine's not taking this train. Ah, All okay. I'm doing is steam eating the train. Right. Ready for the engine. It does come on here for a fast travel when it comes. Ah, okay. And uh, yeah, this goes will be going at a fast one, so the dining train goes at a fast twelve. Right. So we do a engine on for that. Okay. Yeah. And then what do you do? just come on here and do a brake test to make sure the brakes are all working properly and uh, the steam heat the train before the airfoil really. Ah, OK. And then you take it back to the depot or what? No, what we do on this train, we look after this one until the two come in at uh, what time we want to stop or something like that. And then uh, we take the train, the back side we take from here to the Australian Railway to pick them back. OK. Uh, that's how it turns. All these turns are different. Right. Some of them are internal, some of them are external, some of them are one trip, some of them are two trips. Okay. So, yeah, they're all different. And was we get all these turns, these, you know, over a period of time, we get different turns. So, we we'll get a bit of each stuff. All right, then. I'll leave it to you then. You got a new footprint to you now. <laughs> you got a new footprint to you now. Oh, right, okay. Just driving this <laughs> time. Right. There you are. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so was this a passenger loco or a goods loco? So this, in VR days, would have been mainly a goods loco. Right. Um, but they did pull passenger trains, um, mainly over the Somerset and Dorset, because it had, they had really steep and were hauling like 12 coaches. The and slow and dirty as it's now. Yes. But these things could uh, turn a proper little speed, these. They were very capable engines because they... Um yeah. Well then. So what would the top speed of this be? I don't think anyone ever knew because none of them were ever fitted with speed ups. Okay. So they were, they pretty much, because a lot of goods engines didn't need them because you weren't, you weren't going very quick. Right. But there's a, a classic story from King's Cross where um, it was supposed to be a Pacific on an express train and it had failed on check. And the only thing that was ready on that was one of these. Um, and driver had never the driver was a top link driver so never was, was on freight or anything like that so he came to it and he was like oh okay didn't know had no speed or what and an inspector came was on the platform when they pulled in and the inspector comes up and has a chat with him and the driver says it's got no speed out how fast do i know to be going he goes, don't worry we're expecting you to be late just go how however quick it feels comfortable okay 
and it was a 12 coach train or something like that and they were, they, all they needed to do was get it to Peterborough and then another engine was going to take it from there and so they set off and they're going along and what have you and the driver was like, oh, this is riding very nicely, very smoothly, what have you they got to Peterborough and the inspector came out and said, do you know how fast you were going? And was, no, there was no speed up. <laughs> He'd been timed at 92 miles an hour. <laughs> like, it, these things were very capable with everything. I think, like, unfortunately, because they were very late on into VR, a lot of them barely got much use. What year was this uh, in service then? Uh, well, 50 something. Oh, okay. Um, it will be on the plate on the front of it that right, should okay. be there. Yeah. Um, but Thank you, I'll let you eat your sandwich now. No, no These also, they, the Great Western used a lot of them on um, passenger trains and then actually banned them from passenger trains because they were outperforming the Kings and they didn't like it. Oh, okay. um, but in some like Saturday specials and summer specials they did still use them because there was like 15, 18 coach trains. Right. And what got you into train driving? Got what got you into train driving? Well, I'm a fireman, so I, oh, uh, yeah, okay. um, I've always had an interest. So, and I just, after a while, I thought, I finally got sort of the time to be able to put into it. And, you know, it's been a lot of work, but I'm, you know, happy to have got to where I am, and then eventually moved up to okay. the driver. So. And do you have to? conform to network rail health and safety regulations and stuff or are you exclusive are you autonomous as a heritage line? So between Gromont and Whitby we run on the network rail. Okay. So we um, we have to abide by network rail rule books and things like that down there. So what we've done over the last few years is essentially our rule book for the internal heritage bit is more in line with the network book so that we're not having to learn two different sets of rules right. for going by right between there and up here. Right. So mm -hmm. there are still a lot of specific rules for here right. that are not down there or the specific rules for there that aren't really used on here okay. but um, we do have to conform somewhat to the, the network rail rule book just by the nature of us running to Whitby. And is there like a boiler test schedule that has to be followed for all these locos? So they have every the loco has what's called a 28 day washout. So every 28 days of mm -hmm. running, a loco will be stopped. The water cooled down. Water will be drained completely out of it. They'll do a load of maintenance checks and everything, and then. And, the, and then do a boiler test chain and then get it back into service after that. Um, every winter, typically, um, a couple of sun tubes are taken out for inspection, so the boiler inspector can come and then they do a steam test to get it there. Um, but boiler certificates run typically for 10 years. Oh, okay. Um, and then every five years they have what's called a, a mid-steam mid overhaul. So every five years they have a, an overhaul to get them through the next five years right. as well. um, but the, um, they, they get, get regularly checked and everything so they, they're, they're very usually very well looked after yeah. so right, you're not on camera I'm just no, no. <laughs> this is uh, train driver's secrets how to keep your coffee hot <laughs> Right, I'm going to go for a wander to the local show. Thank you for no being problem. so informative. Not at all. Brilliant. Have a good day. You Enjoy. Too. I take it backwards is the approved yes. method of exiting. Um, going down backwards is the best there. There, there, there. As in so much of life. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. See ya. <clears throat> well, that was a treat, wasn't it? Blimey. Serious steam anorax will be able to identify the loco from its number, I've no doubt. Fab, right, I'm going to walk along to the engine shed.
They've just shut the level crossing gates and I've heard a whistle. I'm assuming they're doing that because the train is coming in. Possibly just a shunting loco or the loco that is going to take that train back to Pickering. Apparently, this guy, this this train, this loco was just here heating up the uh, the carriages so that the diners sitting in that luxury dining car we saw. Eat in warmth and comfort. So, judging by the way the points are set, he's going to come on to this track. See? Yeah, he's going to come on to this track right next to us. He's probably then, I'm guessing, going to go down the line and hook up to the back of this train here. So we'll see how much of that we can capture. Token in his hand. dangerous these things were, you know, if you've got a hand caught in that uh, the piston rod mechanism it's not just going to hurt, it's going to tear it off <laughs> and they lived in an age when there was not such stringent health and safety regulation as there is nowadays I'm not saying that health and safety regulation is wrong. I don't believe that for a minute to be the case. I think it's entirely proper that people who do da potentially dangerous jobs should be protected from life-threatening or limb-threatening injuries. It's entirely right. And steam trains in a way are a bit like cathedrals, I guess in that they were a fine invention and performed of great service but people genuinely were died uh, were killed maimed and injured by them and at the time nobody really thought it was a price uh, uh, it was not a price worth paying the perceived benefits of the technology far outweighed the very real injuries that people suffered and I may be exaggerating, I guess they had some kind of procedures. We've just seen the token procedure, which is basically designed to ensure 
that only one train can ever be on a piece of line at the same time. Otters. Oh, to have a house with a garden that leads down to the riverbank. Look at that. history of the railway itself. Extraordinary. This will be of no interest to the steam train buffs, but to my musical friends, it would be great to be able to get an IR of this tunnel. But I don't know if the reverb will come out on the mic. Me making a loud noise would have probably sent the compressor into panic mode, but uh, it's a very lovely reverb in here. Do -da! Don't worry, there's nobody else in the tunnel. It's weird enough that I talk to myself, never mind singing to myself. Ah yes, the other reason why I love these things so much is that they speak to my love of abandonment and decay but in a very unique way in that they are previously abandoned and decaying industrial archaeology that has been restored and is once again operating That one is very nice, it's the same one we just saw in the station. This has clearly had a nice wash. Right, let's go in and look at the viewing gallery. Unless we can get around the back here, if we possibly can. And of course, steam engines were not limited to steam trains. There were all sorts of small stationary engines that we use for farm machinery, powering cotton mills. Ah, oh, right, it speaks to me. Look, loads of abandoned stuff. Parish and idea of a railway. This diesel we saw yesterday in Whitby was pulling a train to Whitby and back. And you see what I mean? There's nothing visible about the workings of it. It's all hidden away. With a steam train you can see it breathing. That, I believe, is a small shunting engine and their function was to obviously move things around the, the, the rail yard, make up chains of carriages and, and wagons to be used by as freight trains and uh, passenger trains. And it's come here take on possibly water, but more likely coal. Look at the amount of coal these things get through. There'll be a water tower somewhere as well. Most of the stations along the line have water towers to top up from. Look at all the bits of train they've got hanging around here. Heritage railways like this just buy stuff as much as they can. Store it, try and put, put it back into service, or cannibalise it for parts. The deviation shed houses engines owned and restored by the North Eastern Locomotive Preservation Group. 
so cool because it stands at the junction of George Stevenson's line and George Hudson's later line. As Hudson's line deviated from Ste Stevenson's original route, the names of the tracks and the structures here often include the word deviation. Hudson's line was built to avoid the steep and dangerous Beck Hole incline. Carriages will hold up the incline with ropes counterbalanced by wheeled water tanks. A system which was later replaced by a stationary steam engine, as we just discussed, and which, until the new route, avoided this famous feature of the line altogether. So we should see lots of interesting locos in here. This is typical of the state that engines arrive here in, and there is a famous steam loco graveyard in Barry Island in Wales, where when British Rail finally succumbs to diesel and electric only operation, I guess in the late 50s, 60s, its stock of locomotives were just shunted into this massive yard in Berry Island and left there to rot, basically. But preservation lines attempt to buy them. And restore them. Shame we can't get closer to that one. Maybe there's another door further up. it's much more convenient to have a diesel engine that you can simply get in from the terminal key and off it goes than to have to get up at 5am in the morning to fire this up and get steam up just to be able to do simple shunting operations. up there and a tender awaiting restoration. It's a shame we can't wander around these. A load of carriages. That actually looks like a self-contained diesel unit. Might be electrical, I don't know. Any rail anoraks? Sorry, I don't mean that as a pejorative term who watch this video, please don't berate me for not knowing all the details. I'm not an expert. I just like steam trains and abandoned and decaying industrial structures. Yeah, diesel fuel only, so that's a self-contained diesel unit. one of the things you realise about this is that the railways used to provide a huge amount of employment because there was just so much stuff that needed doing. Sadly I can't go beyond that barrier either. They also collect stuff from all over the world. And you quite often find some very strange uh, locomotives from Scandinavia, 
America, mainland Europe, sitting in these yards. I guess somebody somewhere in the organisation knows exactly what they've got. Right, let's go back to the other loco shed, the main loco shed, which is up here. For example, talking of strange foreign things, this is from the east of Russia's tramway. Lucky, all this train action today. See the guy with the token? There we are. Just old enough to remember that generation of British Rail carriages and the colour. And I'm just old enough to remember the last steam trains running. And I think that's another reason behind my fascination. Is that as children we used to go on holiday, thank you sir, every summer to Hove and there was a level crossing down the road from where we stayed thank you where we could go and watch the trains Sometimes there would be little local trains that just stopped at the station and pulled out across the level crossing slowly or slowing down on their way into the station. But sometimes the express trains would thunder through. And to be that close to that much machinery moving at that kind of speed was extraordinary. And when they're in full steam, they really are quite something to be to be close to. Look at this! Look at this! Hi there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? And this is just the oh, no, no. This is, I guess, the kitchen. Oh. This whole train appears to be one long buffet. The man's got a beer. Good man. Hi. <laughs> So that's how 
the upper class live. This is ordinary second class, I guess. opportunities in the foyer. Right, is this a little diesel? Oh, sorry. What is this car? It's an electrical generator. Ah. An electrical generator. Started moving with barely the oh right, left the train behind. So I'm assuming there'll be another loco arriving to take this train further. Or it's possible that that loco is going to go back and attach itself to the front of the train. here knows what's going on even if I don't that's fine. Yep he's going across onto the other track. They have hugely complicated systems. Well they look complicated but they're actually probably not they're quite simple. Quite basic. now has to wait for the person at the signal box to switch the points or the fireman gets out and switches them himself. Let's go back up the front of the train and see if they're going to reattach there.
daily operations of hundreds of stations all across the UK in the golden age of the railways. See the rich folks sitting in their fancy dining cars drinking all their coffee and smoking fat cigars He's waiting for the all clear to go. that weight moved by boiling water. So it's a fairly simple and quiet thing when he's going without any load on but let's see with the last eight percent of battery we've got if we can capture him pulling the load of this train away <coughs> now probably the most dangerous job on the railway someone has to hop down between the train and the coach First of all, the thing that actually drags the carriages along, but also the steam pipe that passes steam all the way back down to the train to heat it. I guess it's quite hot water. whole weight of the train is carried by a single metal foot. So the driver just told me they're pushing those carriages into a siding so he's not going to be hauling a fully loaded train but that is nonetheless quite a lot of weight I would imagine. We've got four percent battery left. Let's see. Look at the 